Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And it's number one, two, three. Now that's easy, isn't it? Um, in Sounding the Shadows. First of all, uh, we're very sorry about last week. Uh, mm. Things went completely wrong. Uh, and although we did actually do something, we did. It didn't work. No, I uh, didn't. I wasn't. Didn't sound at all. And because we were on tour, weren't we? And we tried we were, to do yeah. it. Usually, we do it with our nice little microphone in our shed or in our living room with our dog next to us. And last week, maybe it's not having the dog, Adrian. I don't know. Is she here now? Yes, of course she is. Oh, she's there. Yeah. 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 And uh, so there was no sound. So no. that seemed like a rather limited recording, really, didn't it? Actually, also. <laughs> Um, I mean, since the end of last year, when I, I was in hospital and things looked as though they could change dramatically, it's, it, I think it's a bit of a shock to the system to be back touring again. When we say touring, I mean, we're, not, <laughs> we're, we're doing a few dates uh, in Scotland over we this are. fortnight and, yeah. and then later uh, down south a bit. and Mainly next and year. Mainly some next, maybe yeah. some next year. Yeah. So, it, But it... It's it's interesting because when you have a gap in an activity like touring around talking to people, um, you do reflect on the past and the the way things have been and ask yourself <laughs> questions, as I suppose Jesus did. I mean, I'm not comparing his touring with ours, what, but um, no, what were you thinking? Well, um, it was always on the move because he refused to cash in, didn't he, on success anywhere. Yeah. Um, but we we have been we've been very lucky we've been all over the world haven't we, we have I mean I yeah. mean you said Adrian just thinking back about the past I mean I was talking to somebody the other day about the fact that when we used to go away and when you used to go away before I worked with you mm. I mean the idea at the end of an evening was definitely a curry or a Chinese and a That's beer true. and I cannot in our 70s it think of anything worse than trailing around a city that we don't know trying to find no, I know. an Indian or a Chinese still open to then consume quite a large meal mm. And maybe, just maybe, a couple of beers before finding where we were staying. I enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> I don't think we would now, though. Well, we might enjoy it, but I don't think we'd yeah. sleep. So so things automatically change when you get older, don't they? Apart and there, from... there are some things you, you learn for sure. And um, I'm sure I've, I have every story we've probably told before. But um, the story of speaking in, a, in this sitting room once and seeing a face of a man looking at me as I spoke and he looked so grim um I could I couldn't take my eyes off his face and I I thought this is terrible you know this bloke poor bloke really is listening to me driveling on and finding it appallingly tedious mm. and his face seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the evening went on until <laughs> it filled the room and then finally the face moved towards me at the end and he said You'll never know what that's meant to me tonight. And I wanted to say, well, you'll never know what it's meant to me either. I was sitting there thinking I was wasting my time. But on reflection, I thought it just it is a, it is a, a, a great lesson that you simply don't know. No. You simply don't know. No. And we've both been in situations where things seem to go a bit dulled. Mm. Um, and afterwards all sorts of things have happened so there we are well it's interesting i mean we do pray always don't we that the holy spirit will get in between the lines and that if there is something important for somebody somewhere in the things we're saying that 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 might happen and yet i suppose being very fragile one is always affected by people glaring or people just not looking happy with what you're doing because mm. you're you can be distracted but it is true isn't it that quite often when somebody has let us know something or other about a moment in an mm. evening it's nearly always surprising because it's not necessarily a main point mm. or something we hoped would have an effect mm. it's something that person needed to hear from the holy spirit and i think that applies to every conversation anybody has anywhere really don't you I was yes, and in that connection, I was I was quite um, not shocked but surprised on one occasion when someone said to me, "Do you remember coming to our church and said where it was?" And I'd done a not a long talk, but a I think a Sunday morning talk for about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, 
And um, she said, do you realise what you did that day? And I said, well, actually, I don't, because the fact is, I mean, I remembered doing this stuff and thinking there's a, there's a slightly odd atmosphere here. Mm. Um, and I, don't, I can't quite figure it. And I think, to be honest, I thought it was because their view of things was so different from mine mm. that they were just waiting for it to finish. Well, and that can happen. That could happen and can. And does. Uh, so <laughs> she said, um, no, what happened was, she said, everything you said, every sing single thing you said, uh, pinpointed what was wrong with our church. Mm. And she said, after that, Oh, well, she, I, I mean, they, they then sort of dealt with all sorts of things. But mm -hmm. I could never. You see, you see, people say, we say, you know, the Holy Spirit, well, we want the Holy Spirit to be there. But you're quite right. I mean, if if the response isn't great, it's, it's jolly hard work, especially if you, if you use humour a lot, because there's only one test for humour, mm -hmm. and that's that people... People smile or laugh. If you if you do, then you you could pretend to do deeply moving stuff, but then you can never you can never really tell. Mm -hmm. But um, we've been very fortunate. I mean, over the years, um, we we have got on well with people. We've groups that we've spoken to, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, that. But I think that um, that fact that you can't foresee the no, effect can't. of what he said well is i mean even adrian so far with the new book of all the emails and we have had a few each one has mentioned something totally different because it's a collection of all sorts of bits and pieces isn't it yeah and i think is, that applies very striking yeah but then i remember years ago we and now this this isn't to do with touring it just strikes me about what we were saying about the holy spirit and hearing things that are right for us and um after this is so many years ago when you'd had that major crack up and we were kind of crawling back into church having been quite bruised by life and by everything else and we decided that we would start going to a church in a local town not our own town didn't we do you remember we well, went? Carry on, I'm not well, with you yet. No, well, we be. went to Eastbourne yeah. and we went to a very lively oh, I church. Oh, know what you're going to say. And we enjoyed it all the yeah. way through, and yeah. we enjoyed the sermon. But both of us took one thing from it, which was return to your home church. Hmm. And when we met the vicar afterwards over coffee, we said, "Yes, it's been lovely." He said, "Are you thinking of joining our church?" And we said, "Well, we were, but actually, hmm. what you said." has made us realise that this isn't the right place for us and that we should be going back to where we were, OK, where things were difficult, and that's where we need to start again. He said, I never said any of that. I never even mentioned. And I'm not sure he did. But somehow, God, Holy Spirit, whatever, got right in the middle of it, and what we both heard was something different. I mean, I find that quite fascinating, really. Yeah, I think even now, I, I, I can't understand why we would hear something different. No. Both hear the same thing that was different. <laughs> well, obviously, it was bellowing in our ears from the Holy Spirit because it yeah. was the right decision for us at the time. It'd be fascinating to know if anyone else has had that sort of experience where you go to something with a set mm. view of where you're going and how you're going forward and you end up doing something completely different. Yeah. The, the other thing I was thinking about was intervals. You know, wh why do people go to these evenings? Um, well, why do people go anywhere? Why do people go to church weekends, for instance? I think often because it's rather nice to sit and be with people you know and not do anything and just mm. chat. Mm. And in, in fact, every now and then we're asked to, to, to do a weekend. And sometimes people say, well, we could do this on Saturday morning and this on Friday and then in the afternoon and then in the evening and then sun and and I've said well actually I think you might be just crowding it out a bit because mm. I know people will want to um, spend time relaxing mm. and it's a little bit the same with the the interval in the evenings we've done not quite like that but people sometimes have come with one thing to say yeah and it's as though it's brimming because when you think the time has come for you to let something out of yourself, um, it's not easy. You've just got your one chance. Yeah. And and I can obviously it could be somebody else, but when it's us, I can remember people coming 
I know it's happened to you as well. Someone will suddenly blurt something. Yeah. And you have very little time in which to respond to it. And I think often it's it's the the letting out that counted. I remember one time, I'd forgotten it until this moment, um, we had a book on sale, and still do sometimes, um, called The Unlocking, which is about fear. Yeah, we haven't. I think that one's out of print. We've just yes, got one or two, yeah. haven't we? And um, it's all about fear, and it's m mainly based on my fears because I sat down to write a book about other people's fears. You and did, didn't you? <laughs> Catalogued my own fears and found they were abundant. I mean, <laughs> some slight, some serious, but there they were. So um, this man came to buy a book and he looked at the books and then he said, um, what's this one? And I said, oh, that's, uh, that's called The Unlocking. That's, you know, if you, if you feel you have fears, that would be a book, um, you know, you could, you could use, I suppose. And he looked for a bit longer and he said, um, and he bought another book. And then he said, um, I'll take that one. He said, I, I know someone that would be quite good for. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, well, that's fine, good. So he took them and he came back at the end of the evening holding the unlocking and he said, I wasn't telling the truth earlier. He said, um, I'm full of fear. Oh, bless you. He said, I'm, I'm so frightened. He said, I'll, I'll, I'm going to read this book. But mm -hmm. I suppose it was difficult to be vulnerable in that mm -hmm. situation and to say... Maybe, maybe that makes it difficult to pick that book up. I don't know. I never really thought about mm -hmm. that. And we have often wondered whether the covers and titles of books affect people much. Oh, I'm sure they do. And colours of titles and, and all the rest of it. But we're not expert in that, are we? I mean, I think a book needs to look friendly, <laughs> I suppose, for me. Um, but I was thinking, you know, sometimes uh, people feel that they need to buy a serious book to... A book like The Unlocking, and that's absolutely right. But sometimes you just need to suggest maybe a book that they might curl up with and be comfy with yeah. and and enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't think I've said this to you. I met somebody in the interval the other day who said that she'd mistakenly given this book to a friend of hers who was in hospital after having had a hysterectomy who said this was a very bad book for her to have because she nearly broke her stitches because oh, no. she kept laughing yeah. but actually there was the most amazing experience you had once I'm not going to keep saying I'm sure we've said it before but we were in New Zealand weren't we mm. do you remember and a lady came up to you and mm. she said uh, she told you about that original book The Sacred Diary and how she'd given it to her husband Husband, who was her father who yeah. was terminally ill yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah it was a it was a very moving moment because well moving in more than one way because <laughs> i i thought she was going to tell me off i had occasionally been told off about things um and she said i gave the book to my father who had a terminal illness and had lost his comfort over his faith and was he praying the right prayers and did God love him and did he love God and was there a heaven or wasn't mm, there a heaven mm, mm. and she said so I gave him your book the sacred diary and I she didn't smile she didn't show any any positive signs <laughs> so I thought oh dear so I said well what did he make of that and she said um Adrian um, he laughed himself to death. Mm. <laughs> she said every time he got a bit low, he'd pick the book up and he'd read a little bit. And it wasn't just laughing. It was it was somehow realising that there is a a humanity and a humour in God, a, mm. a, a, a wish to get through the stuff that we call religion mm. in order to reach something that is there before the beginning of time something mm. warm and mm. um and able to talk able to listen she All will never things. know she will never know I mean, this is years ago isn't it and yeah, she will never know the ago. impact of that on you at that time it's 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 one of the things that i think i've learned 
um, how important it is sometimes to just tell somebody something that's happened. And I'm not talking about books and tours at the moment. I'm talking about what it means to get an email or a message or a or a card or something, you know, um, mm. that, that that moment can be so reassuring. And that was for you, wasn't it? At the moment where you thought maybe you'd done something, you know, yeah, but I, had a terrible effect. And actually, we we do worry sometimes far yeah. too much about the impact of things that we might say. Um, and, and sometimes they are just right. Yeah, I, I, I remember thinking if that's the only thing that's ever happened to me. Exactly. That would do, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very, yeah. really nice thing to hear. And you're right, as we've often said, there's a huge benefit in what other people call time wasting, isn't there? I mean, spending time simply listening to people, talking to people. Yeah, or making an effort to do something yeah. like making yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, um, that's not easy in an interval. <laughs> because an interval is 20 minutes to half an hour and um, sometimes there is somebody I mean people do want to be able to go home at a reasonable time so that isn't easy but you know sometimes we underestimate that time after church I think I think some churches see it as a bit of an add-on that isn't really necessary but it's often the time isn't it that um where you can talk a little bit and share a little bit and uh, mm. and relax a little bit. I know, I remember the in the youth group we, we used to help with the youth group years and years and years ago, and I remember the vicar, who was, let's say, not the most humorous or relaxed character. Well, he in got the you world. lot in his youth group, Adrian. Uh, no, 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 I wasn't in the youth group. Oh, I was right. an adult then. No. Oh, he, sorry. Uh, and he's uh, there was a lot of laughing in the the meeting that evening. The you know the the before the end of the evening, uh, teenagers, younger teenagers, older teenagers, laughing, having a drink, um, all that stuff. And um, and then the vicar said, uh, if I can remember, I don't know if these are exact words, something like, "Well, we've we've had some fun, uh, and we've we've laughed, and um, I think it's time for prayer." And I thought this is leave a, God out at that a point. Bit sad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a bit sad. It's like someone else we knew who said, "Leaving God out of the equation for a moment." I love my morning walks, and I thought mm. that's a bit sad for God mm. uh, to be left out of the equation mm. because it appears to be a secular. Um, activity that uh... well I think that's interesting Adrian I mean you know we've talked before about the generosity of God and the generosity of the way Jesus was with people and where that applies where we allow God into things like our hospitality and we've had some wonderful hospitality just over this last two weeks haven't we yeah and, and yeah. where God is involved where you allow him in there's so often laughter and 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 just slightly over the top generosity and i don't necessarily mean it has to cost more but just in the way that it's done in a sense that you're giving something and uh, i was thinking of a, a time when i was helping with preparing um harvest and it is harvest of course and a harvest festival supper And we had a meeting beforehand. And I understand because it was that people wanted to save the church money. But do you remember I told you that somebody said, well, I know where I can get hold of some really cheap sausages. And I remember thinking and saying, but we don't want to do that, She said they're not very nice. She said they're not very nice. But they're cheap. Yeah, and I understand. It's like the coffee. do we do good coffee? Do we do the cheapest? Do we save the church because we want to be frugal? Mm. Or do we say we want the best for the people who come? And mm. um, I think many churches have been through a learning curve about this and come to a point of thinking, I want to reflect the mm. generosity of God. I don't want yeah. to look mean and miserable. And um, It's a tricky balance, of course it is. But uh, yeah. It's an interesting thing, isn't it, about about Jesus and his travelling and everything, and and then being crucified, and no doubt people said, "Well, what a shame," you know, looking so promising. Yeah, he was looking so um, promising. Yeah. You know, he could have started a little church and synagogue, and you know, helped a lot of people, 
But the fact is, I mean, leaving aside resurrection and salvation of mankind, um, every individual that he met and worked with, the Syrophoenician woman, the blind people, the, the leper, um, the, the widow of Nain, I mean, the list is endless, the four men with their friend, lowering their friend through the roof. For them, if you'd said to them, was Jesus a success? They'd have mm -hmm. said, absolutely, mm. a huge success. He changed my life. Mm. Uh, so, so then mm. the crucifixion, which looks like failure, mm. suddenly you see mm. that it is a means of continuing the, the, the real success mm. of what God is doing. And that to be just a tiny part of that is a huge, mm. huge privilege. Mm. Well, when you think about those stories, the ones you've mentioned, they're yeah. almost always tiny moments in a day, yeah, that's aren't right. they? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I know they're huge because quite often they involve healing or they involve, but not always. Yeah. Sometimes they just involved his heart going out to them mm. and that being seen or providing food where people needed it, which mm. feels huge because we put the word miracle yeah. around them. But they were just half an hour in a day yeah, and sometimes right, yeah. maybe if we could think like that that there might be 10 minutes in a day or half an hour in a day where we can be part of the generosity of god with our thinking with yeah. our eyes with our listening yeah. or with our cakes you know cause yeah. well, i'm not cake. sure about cakes <laughs> well that well no you're not a baker <laughs> well are if you? they're if they're those nice uh, what are they called those french fancies i like <laughs> no i'm not sure about sharing them <laughs> <laughs> right. I love well, French no, fancies. No, I don't mm. know. No. I don't anyway, know. we're we're off touring again, and we're well. We just got one meeting more pe meeting people. And, yeah, uh, one more this time, yeah. and then some more. And you uh, never know; we might meet you. Yes, you know? that would be lovely. That anyway, would be lovely. Whatever happens, we promise we'll see you next week. We will. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.